Okay, I thought I'd go over some of the uh, build specs and what I did and what you might want to do if you want to build one of these. I picked this uh, remote unit up off AliExpress and you can uh, pause your video if you want to read any of this stuff in particular. If you're interested in finding the same one. Now the prices up there <clears throat> are always changing. There's always specials going on. The time I ordered this thing it was, it was like ten dollars. I don't know what the normal price would be all the time. But um, I initially picked it not just because it was a low cost and uh, digital and not IR. It's actually a transmitter. Is that it would give me the joysticks forward and backward on the tracks and reverse and all that real easy to control but it also had a third channel and initially I was thinking about using the third channel to uh, either rotate the body or rotate the head something like that I didn't end up doing that but you could also use it to uh, trigger sound effects or trigger the lights or something like that but they're they're momentary buttons all this all these buttons are momentary in other words you couldn't push it and lock it on and push it and lock it off on the lights so that's why I didn't tie the lights into it in fact I'm not using it that's just an extra channel that I could use if I wanted to add something more to it. Now on the uh, bottom I ended up uh, because I knew I was going to be experimenting and changing things around instead of gluing this piece in which was my original intention and I probably still will eventually I ended up just drilling some pilot holes and putting some uh, self-tapping number two screws in that had flat heads. They're, they're basically screws that we'd use to hold servos in so anytime you buy a servo they come with screws and uh, that holds this whole panel in. Now this piece here is the door. Well here's the main switch. I'm going to turn that off so all my lights are off. I pull this back then this just lifts out and then I can get to the four uh, AA batteries and just slides in that way and that goes and then slides forward. So you've got a door on the bottom. Um, covered in some of the videos I'll go over some of this stuff kind of quickly because it, some of it's all been covered. I'm using 632 screws, those are American type screws, to hold the motor in down in there, to hold these caps on which keep these uh, idler sprockets in place, and then these ones here just happen to bend black for these uh, idlers down here for the tracks. I tighten them all the way down then back them up about a half a turn so that I know they're nice and loose. These ones you can tighten down all the way because the cap goes down against the stud and the stud I purposely made uh, longer so they'd be play. The one that fits onto the uh, TT gear motor, uh, I run a long uh, number two screw right through the sprocket into the motor to hold it on and then I just glued the cap on. I probably should get a really short screw uh, to glue on this hole so it kind of has the same look as all these and maybe go with all black screw somewhere, I don't know. Um, this lower tracks part of the body is printed in two pieces. As you can see there's a seam there that I glued together and you can glue those together first because there's still plenty of room before this piece is on to reach in there and change the motors around or put new motors in. I've actually initially when I built this base when you watch the earlier ones I'm using the the new, new to me anyway, uh, the 220 to 1 gear ratio motors. They were real slow and powerful and I figured I would need it. It was crawling a bit too slow for me so I ended up putting in the uh, 120 to 1 or as they like to say 1 to 120 uh, gear motors. And it might even be able to go to the 90 to 1 and go even faster. I haven't tried the 90 to 1's but these don't seem to lug down and have fairly decent speed and uh, lots of pull. Now on the body itself as you can see there is a seam so it prints in two parts too. Each part would lay flat on the build plate like that and you do have to use uh, supports. Um, the files that I have up on Thingiverse for this right now do have uh, openings for putting LEDs in there and channels for running the wires. This particular one I didn't want to print these parts again so I ended up drilling them out and drilling holes up and it was kind of a pain and I even kind of buggered it up a little bit with a the drill there but it worked. Um, the main reason I decided not to make the body turn is because if the body turns then you need to design different arms that can be articulated or are more up in the air because if the body turns they're going to run into the lower back part 
and I wasn't planning on making articulated arms because they're already kind of uh, spidery and skimpy as it is and I figured to be getting kind of weak so the back ones I did purposely pose them different than the front ones and the arms are in fact printed in two parts too see the seam there there's a front and a back to each one so the front side you, you got like a little solenoid thing that the actual robot had for opening and closing the claw and then the back side doesn't and uh, there's the type 1 arm and the type 2 arm so they're kind of spaced different to make it look better and they just glue in either side uh, there's the number one triangle and there's the number one uh, circle if you want to put those in you can and um, the head of course this red piece I printed in translucent red uh, PLA and there's just stuck a, uh, a white LED back in there aiming forward and then another one up here actually they're kind of a uh, warm kind of a yellow white I just happened to have some laying around and I just glued the head down again I could have motorized the head to turn since that does turn in the in the movie um, but I didn't but it's something you could do if you decide to build one of these things so uh, I guess these should be painted black because they're supposed to look like fox you know fake tread sections and the original robot and there's all kinds of little details a person could paint and put in there which I haven't bothered to do but um, turned out pretty good fairly happy with it I can't think of anything else we need to cover on here I think that's about it links will be in the description down below for the earlier build videos and a link to the uh, STL files on Thingiverse